Hey, pre all people, uh, live again, but not really live again, from room 100, um, section 4.2, degrees and radians. Gosh, if you look down at the bottom here, it says 19 slides. We're going to try to get through this a little quicker than we have been. Um, pause the video if you need to, get some notes down, get what you need, but I'm going to kind of go a little faster today, try to, because I think you've seen a lot of this information before, but degrees and radians. Degrees and radians are two different kinds of measures we use to measure angles. Uh, first of all, let's talk about some angle stuff here. When an angle is called standard position, that means one side is on the x-axis, like that one right there. Let me change colors here. One side is on the x-axis, and the other side of your angle is somewhere else, somewhere besides the x-axis. So we're going to end up calling this, if you look over here, we're going to call the side that is on the x-axis the initial side. So we're going to say the initial side is on the x-axis, right there. The terminal side, the word terminal comes from the fact that we're going to say that this side of the angle actually moves around a circle. So if it moves this way, it stops right here. Therefore, we call it the terminal side. So this would be the initial side. That would be the terminal side. Now, one unusual thing you're going to find out today is that sometimes the angle also moves this direction. So you could have a negative angle. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So off this slide, you need to know what standard position looks like, which is where the initial side is on the x-axis and you need to know that the terminal side is the other side. All right, positive and negative angles. Um, positive angles are just angles that move around the coordinate plane in this direction. When they're going that direction, you'll see a lot of arrows like that today that are drawn showing which direction the angle went. That's a positive angle when they move that direction. When they move the other direction, when they go this way, like this direction, it's going to be the negative direction or negative angle. And the direction is going to be important as we continue here. So make sure that you know positive angles go this direction around the coordinate plane. Po negative angles go this direction. Also, don't forget the two words we learned a minute ago. This is the initial side. That is the terminal side. And this angle is in standard position because the uh, initial side is on the x-axis. All right, the first thing I'm going to have you do is take an angle measure that is in degree form and have you write that in radians. Oh, sorry, this, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is called DMS form, which means degree, minute, seconds. Um, sometimes you will see angles written like, if you look at part B right here, 35 degrees, 12 minutes, 7 seconds. Uh, basically, it's just like time. 12 minutes is really 12 sixtieth of another degree. 7 seconds is 7 36 hundredths of a degree, or it would be 7 60th of a, another minute, just like, our, just like our time works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this 39.125 and change it to um, minutes and seconds. So the 329 I'm going to leave alone for a minute because it's, it's the standard degree measure, it's the, it's the integer part. I'm going to take the 0.125, which is 125 thousandths and try to turn it into minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it like this, put x over 60. I'm going to translate that 125 to something over 60. So I'm going to take my calculator and work out that proportion. I'm going to say 60 times 125 and divide that answer by 1,000. Oops, I forgot the division bar. It was 7,500. Let's see. Divided by, there we go, 1,000. 7.5. So I have this many minutes now. So right now I'm looking at 325 degrees, seven and a half minutes. But they don't want you to leave any decimals. They want you to change this to seconds. So I'm going to take the 0.5, which is 5 tenths, and go x over 60 again. And I can do that one in my head. 10 goes into 60 six times. 5 times 6 is 30, so x is 30. Or you should know that anyway. Half of a minute is 30 seconds. So to change this to DMS form, we would say 329 degrees, 7 minutes, and 30 seconds. So if that would have come out even right here, there would not have been any seconds. I would just stop the 329 degrees and 7 minutes or whatever. But any, as you keep getting decimals, you keep breaking it down. You can't go lower than seconds. So once you get to seconds, you stop. All right, this one's actually a little bit easier, part B when you're going from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimals, because we're just going to write it like it says. We're going to say 35 degrees, 12 minutes, which is 12 sixtieths of another degree. And then you may not know this fact, but there are 3,600 seconds in an hour in our time. And so there's also 3,600 
um, seconds in a degree. So I'm going to say 7 over 3600. I'm going to punch that in my calculator just as I see it and turn that to a decimal. So it's going to be 35 plus uh, 12 over 60. And you can, you can reduce that to 150 if you wanted to. Plus 7 over 3600. Hit enter. And there's our decimal. Now the other one keeps going. I'm going to round it to like three places. I'm going to say 35.202. Um, 35.202 degrees. That's pretty accurate. So you may want to pause that and make sure you have that. How to go from a decimal degree into DMS form or degree minute second form. And also the other way, how to go from DMS form down to degrees. All right, big deal here. What is a radian? Um, radian, first of all, I want you to look at the picture instead of looking at the information on the left. The radian is when an arc of a circle, that arc right there, is the exact same length if you stretch it out as that radius. That would equal one radian, where that arc length right here of that circle is exactly the same. Let me do this. That arc measure is exactly the same as the, radian, as the radius. That's one radian. Um, so to find the measure, it should make sense to you that the bigger the arc, let's say the arc goes let me find the color here. Let's say the arc does this and goes this far. And let's say that that orange arc right there is, is two times as big as the radius. If it's two times as big as the radius, we're going to say, okay, then that means that is two radians because the arc was twice as big as the radius. So anytime you want to find the radian measure of an angle, here's how it works. You take the length of the arc and divide it by the radius. The length of the arc divided by the radius. We use S for the length of the arc and R, of course, radius. So you get that one, R, R, radius. Yeah. Okay, circumference of a circle, the distance all the way around a circle, if I do this all the way around a circle, the circumference of the whole circle is 2 pi R. Learn that in geometry. So to find out how many radians there are in a whole entire circle, we would take the arc length of any circle, which is 2 pi R, and divide it by R. And if we do that, the R's we cancel. The radius, the, sorry, just like there are 360 degrees in a circle, there are two power radians in a circle because, of, because that's the arc length. The length of the arc is two pi r, that's the whole circle divided by the radius. So it's two pi radians. Which leads to the next question down here. How many radians in half a circle? If an entire circle is two pi radians, half a circle must be pi radians. Which means one fourth of a circle, which is gonna sound weird, would be one half pi or we're going to say pi over 2 radians. So these are radians, pi radians, half a circle, pi over 2 radians, one-fourth of a circle. Again, you may want to pause that. You, that's a very important slide. Make sure you know what a radian is, and especially that there are two pi radians in a whole circle, pi radians in half a circle. All right, let's kind of go through a circle here. That's zero right here. I'm going radians now. If you go all the way around the whole circle, this this point is also, if you go all the way around the whole circle, you've also been 2 pi. So that's also 2 pi right there, 2 pi radians. If we go halfway around the circle, halfway around to right here, we said that's halfway to 2 pi, so that's 1 pi radians, which let's go ahead and make it even shorter. If we go halfway to halfway, or 1 fourth of the circle, that would represent pi over 2. If we went all the way down to here, we've gone one pi and halfway to another pi, so we've gone one and a half pi. We're going to call that three pi over two because three over two is one and a half, so that's three pi over two. And of course, we could keep breaking that up. If I draw a radius right here, halfway between those, that would be pi over four radians. Um, right here, that would be like two pi over four. This is three pi, this is three fourths of the way to pi. You know, I could draw another one down here. That's 5 pi over 4. Down here is almost, that's pi over 4 away from being 2 pi. So that would be 7 pi over 4 because if I went one more pi over 4, that's a 7. It almost like a 3. Um, it would be 8 pi over 4. And you can do that with whatever number you want to. You know, you could come here and say, okay, that right there, that's pi over 6. And you could keep going by pi over 6's radians also. But those are radians measures which correspond, of course, to like, you know, 2 pi represents 360 degrees, pi over 4 represents 45 degrees, this was 90 degrees, that's 135 degrees, that's 180, and you can keep going like that, this is 270 degrees, um, all the way around your circle. Ok, 
Okay, the next thing they're going to have you do is take a rate. I tried to do this earlier, that's why I messed up a little bit earlier. They're going to make you take radians to degrees and degrees to radians. And this is pretty simple right here. To go from degrees to radians, you're going to multiply by pi over 180. Pi over 180. And then to go from radians to degrees, you're actually going to multiply by 180 over pi. And it's going to make a lot of sense when I show you this example. And to be honest, I don't do that either one of those formulas very much. But I'm going to show you both ways, one way that I do it, and then using the formula or what to multiply by and see if it doesn't make sense to you. Okay, here's some, two examples of each. Uh, the first one says 135 degrees, and we're going to take that and change it to radians. So I'm going to say 135 degrees times. Now, what I want to happen is I want the degrees to cancel. So I'm going to put the pi on the top and the 180 degrees on the bottom. That lets my degrees cancel right there. So if I do that, um, 45 goes into 135 three times. It goes into 184 times. So I'm going to get 3 times pi over 4. And that's your answer. That's all you do, 3 pi over 4. Now, to be honest, the way I do it is I know that when it's degrees, it has to have a pi. So I just do this. I just say 135, and I, put the, I always say I put the pi with it. Put the pi on top and divide by 180, and then just reduce the 135 and 180, and you get the exact same thing. I'll show you that what I do here on the negative 30. On negative 30, well, on negative 30, I'm just going to say negative 30. I'm going to put the pi with it over 180, and um, just cancel the 30 and the 180. If I do that, 30 goes into 180 six times, so it's just negative pi over 6. And remember, negative angle is okay. It just moves around the circle this direction instead of the other direction. All right, now we're going to go from radians into degrees. The formula said to do it this way. Do 2 pi over 3 times 180 over pi. And the reason pi is on the bottom is so it can cancel here because you don't want a pi in your answer when you're doing degrees. So I'm going to cancel also my 3 and 180 and make that 60. That leaves me 2 times 60, which is 120 degrees. Now, again, that's probably not how I would do that one. Let me show you on this last one what I would, the way I do these. All I tell people to do is where the one eight, where the pi is. Remember, pi on the circle. When we did our circle, pi was over here, which is the same thing as 180 degrees when you go that way. So the quick way to me is just put the 180 in where the pi is, the 180 degrees over four. Uh, cancel. Um, four goes into 180. Um, let me think here. Four, 45 times. That's not true either. 4 and 1, 8, 2, 9, 8. Because the other doesn't go 45 times. So I'm going to go 3 times 45. And 3 times 45 is 135 negative. Because we started negative. Negative 135 degrees. So either way you want to go, if you want to use the formula like this, like they tell you to, or if you just want to plug a 180 in for the pi, either way will work. Same thing on the first two. Okay. Huge word here. Coterminal angles. I'm just going to read the definition with you, hopefully you're reading with me. It says two angles that have the same initial size and terminal sides but have different measure. So and I drew an example of one right here. I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna kinda just do this. Let's say I go this way and I measure that angle and that angle is mm, let's say it's thirty degrees. Right, if I go this way around a circle, remember I'm going negative direction, that angle then would be negative three hundred and thirty degrees. Those two angles would be called coterminal because their initial side and the terminal side are at the same place, but they have different measures. Um, I'll show you a really strange one. You could do something like this. Like you could go all the way around the circle and then back to here. And you got to think about how far you went. Because I went all the way around, I went, I went 360, I went up 30 more. That puts me at 390 degrees. Um, all three of those angles have the same size and the same side. Uh, they have the same initial side, the same terminal side. They are what are called coterminal because they all, you know, the terminal side ends up at the same place. Now, if you're in radians, if you want to find um, coterminal angles, here's what you do. You just add or subtract 2 pi. For example, if I say, okay, give me an angle that is coterminal to pi over 2, what I would do is I, I could just add 2 pi to it because that's going all the way around the circle. And if I did that, that would be 5 pi over 2. So 5 pi over 2 and 1 pi over 2 are coterminal. If you have degrees, let's say you have, I don't know, 70 degrees, you can either add or subtract 360 degrees. So this one I could either do plus 360 degrees. I can also do minus 360 degrees and get a negative angle. 
430 degrees is coterminal with 70 because they would have the same terminal side. Hope that makes some sense. Make sure you get these two things, the way you do find a coterminal for um, radians and the way you find a coterminal for degrees. And of course now they're going to give you something, they're going to say, okay, identify all the angles that are coterminal with a given angle and then find a positive one and a negative one that are also coterminal. They give you 80 here. To find all of them, because it's in degrees, I would do this. I'm going to say 80 degrees plus 360 N, where N is going to be an integer. So you can multiply 360 by anything you want to, add it to the 80, and you're good to go. Some books will tell you do this, 80 degrees plus or minus 360, where N is you know, a whole number or whatever, but if you say integers here, integers are positive and negative whole numbers, so that'll, that'll work just fine. Then it says find one positive and one negative. So to find a positive one, I'm just going to take 80 and add 360 degrees to it, and that would give me 440 degrees. To find the negative one, I'm going to take 80 and do minus 360, and that would give me negative 280 degrees. So there's a positive one and a negative one that are coterminal to it. Now we're going to radians next. The radians, to find all of them, I'm going to say negative pi over 4. Now remember what corresponds to 360 in radians is 2 pi. So I'm going to say 2 pi n, or some people say 2 n pi, it doesn't matter. And the same deal, n has to be an integer. And that represents all the coterminal ones. Now to find a positive one, I'm going to take negative pi over 4 and add 2 pi. Uh, you might want to think about this way, 2 is really 8 over 4. So I'm going to do an 8 pi over 4 plus negative 1 pi over 4. That's 7 pi over 4. And to find a negative one, I'm going to subtract 2 pi. Negative pi over 4 minus 2 pi. And get, let's see, that'd be negative 1 minus 8. Negative 9 pi over 4 for that one. So that's a, all these slides are pretty important. They're not really difficult as far as work goes. I will tell you this. Sometimes when you're looking for a positive or a negative one, you may have to add 360 or 2 pi more than once to get there. It depends on how big or small the, your initial angle is. Okay, arc length. Um, arc length is what we were saying S was a minute ago. And remember, when we were doing radians, we said radians were S over R. So if we're going to turn it around a little bit and think, okay, how big is an arc? How big? That's what S stands for. I would just multiply the angle times R. Um, I'm going to read the definition now, but this is what it's going to say. I probably should have read the definition first. It says this, arc length. If theta is a central angle in a circle with radius R, then the length of the intercepted arc is given by S equals R theta, which is what we just did, where theta is measured in radians. Now that's an important point. We're only going to do this when our central angle is in radians. Okay, a couple of examples here at the bottom of the screen. Find the length of the intercepted arc in each circle with the given central angle and radius, rounds the nearest tenth. So to find the central, the arc length, I'm just going to do the angle, in this case is pi over 3, times 4, which is the radius. That's really, I don't know why I just put 4 on the bottom. It clearly says pi over 3. It's doing pretty good today, too. Pi over 3 times 4. Now, it says nearest tenth, so because it says nearest tenth, let's take our calculator and just punch it in and, and see what the arc length is going to be. I'm going to clear out the other stuff I have on my calculator. The pi, by the way, is right above your exponent button. So it's second pi divided by 3. Um, probably should have put that in parentheses. I'm going to hit enter, go ahead and get that decimal, and then do times 4 which is 4 point, in our case, 4.2, if we round to nearest 10, so I'm going to put 4.2 inches. Um, and that would be how big the arc was. Now that would look kind of like this. If that was your circle, um, your radius is 4, and your central angle is pi over 3, which is about 60 degrees, so it's about right there. So that arc length right there, 4.2, if your radius is 4. Okay, let's go one more here. This one's degrees. Um, in degrees, that's going to change things up. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to have to change my degrees to radians. So I'm going to do 125. Remember, put the pi with it. Divide it by 180. Reduce it as much as you can. Or actually, this time it doesn't really matter because your calculator can reduce it. But I'm sitting here stuck, so I'm going to try to reduce it. 5 goes into 125 um, 25 times. It goes into 180 36 times. So there we go. It's 25 pi over 36 radians. 125 degrees. So I'm going to multiply that times the radius. Get the calculator back out. Move it over. Clear it out. I'm going to do parentheses this time. 25 pi 
divided by 36 times 7. And remember, I'm, I'm going one decimal place to the tenths place. That's going to round to 15.3. So my S this time is going to be 15.3 centimeters. That's how big the arc is. Pretty cool. But remember, to do this one, you have to have radians. So that's why on part B right there, we had to change that to radians. All right, getting close. Hang in there. Next is linear and angular speed. I'm just going to kind of read this and kind of show you what it's talking about, if I possibly can. It says, suppose an object moves at a constant speed along a circular path of radius r. So what's happening is basically our terminal side. We're moving and it's going at a certain path at a constant speed. Speed's not changing to a certain point. Okay, read the next sentence. If s is the arc length traveled by the object during time t, then the object's linear speed is given by s over t. And that should make sense to you. What it's saying is, remember, s is the arc length. That's how far it's going. And this is how long it took to get there. Um, so to figure out what the speed was, that's how you do speed. I mean, think about this. In algebra, you learn this. Distance equals rate times time. So to find speed, you would do the distance it traveled divided by the time, which is what this is. Um, the second part, if theta is the angle of rotation, that whatever angle it makes in radians, now that's a key, in radians, you know, everything's in radians today, through which the object moves during time t, then the angular speed is given by the, the angle divided by t. So instead of the arc length, the angular speed is the actual angle divided by the time. All right, let's try, let's try a couple of those real quick. Uh, this one says a typical vinyl record. You may not know what those are. Those are big uh, black discs that used to play on record players or turntables. has a diameter of 30 centimeters. When played on a turntable, the record spins at 33 and one-third revolutions per minute. Part A, find the angular speed in radians per minute as of a record as it plays. Part B, find the linear speed. So let's go back one slide and remember that formula we have for angular speed because that was the first thing they asked us for, I think. Yes, it was. I'll keep going back and forth here. Angular speed was the second one, which is just the angle divided by the time. So for part A, I'm going to do, I'll put it down here. Part A, to find angular speed, which they use this, I use a W. I'm doing theta divided by the time. Um, I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'll be right back to finish this problem. Sorry about that. Uh, I would tell you where I went, but okay, I had to sneeze about that. Um, anyway, to find the angular speed, theta is going 33 and one-third turns a minute. So what's happening there is theta is going to be 33 and one-third times 2 pi. The time is just one minute. So I punched that in my calculator. While I was back there sneezing, I went ahead and punched it in my calculator, and I got 209.4. Um, and that would be radians per Radians per, what are we in? Radians per minute. And how fast? That's the actual angular speed of how fast it is turning. Pretty fast. Um, part B. Now, once the linear speed, and the linear speed, if we look back at the last slide, that was the first one. The linear speed is just arc length over t. So, I'm, so this time, I'm going linear speed is arc length over t. Time again this time is just going to be a minute, so that's not going to be any big deal. The arc length, though, it says by the also says by the outer edge. The outer edge is is the radius is 15. The radius is 15 because it said it there the diameter was 30. So I'm going to do 15 times. This is how far it went. That's how far it went. So 15 times 209.4. I'm just going to punch that in real quick. 15. There's my last calculation. 15 times 209.4. And now we get 3141. Now the problem with the 3141 is that is that is how many um, revolutions per minute that is turning. Actually, centimeters per minute that is traveling, or the speed that is traveling. And this one wants centimeters per second. So I'm going to change minutes into seconds here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to multiply that and say, okay, one minute is really 60 seconds. Because if I do that, what's going to happen is my minute units cancel. So I'm basically doing 3141 divided by 60. So I'm just going to take my calculator and divide that by 60. And I get 
52.35 and now I'm, now I'm good because that's 52.35 centimeters per second of linear speed. Hope that made a little bit of sense. If not, keep flipping back and forth those two and make sure you know where all these numbers come from. Especially that one which came from the problem. How many times it's spinning per minute and make sure you know where the radius came from. And the 2 pi comes because one revolution is 2 pi radians around the circle. Alright, area of a sector or part of a circle. Um, instead of doing the area of the whole circle, they're going to ask you what the area of a sector is or section of a circle. And um, the way we're going to find that is this right here. We're going to say the area of a sector is one half r squared times theta, where theta is in radians. Again, all these formulas I've given you, these last three, only work with radians. So if they give you degrees, the first thing you need to do is change those to radians. Let's try a couple here. Find the area of this sector. Remember the formula. I'll go back one more time just so you can see it in case you didn't write it down. Hopefully you, you stopped writing it down. One half r squared theta. So I'm going one half r squared times theta. And if you think about it, the area of a whole circle is one half pi r squared. So now we're just taking whatever angle it is. We're still doing, we're just not taking the whole pi because uh, we're trying to figure out just part of a circle. So I'm saying one half r is 5, so I'm going to say 1 half 25, and theta is 3 pi over 4. And as long as it's in radians, you're good to go right there. You're going to just go ahead and work that out. So I'm going to take the calculator and just punch that straight in, just how I see it. Let me clear these other things out. 1 half, I'm going to go ahead and punch in 0.5 times 25 times 3 pi over 4. And hit enter. And I get 29.5. Let's go run decimal place, 29.5 centimeters, oops, 29.5 square centimeters. Um, occasionally they may want you to leave that and um, put the pi in it. If we did that, we would just say that that's the same thing as 75 pi over 8. And all I did there is I multiplied the 25 times 3 and the 4 times 2. Okay, last thing here. If they give you 1... They give you a circle and give you degrees instead of radians. You're going to have to take the 60 degrees and change it to radians. So I, I told you what I do before. I just stick to pi with it, divide it by 180, reduce it. That's pi over 3. 60 and pi over 3, the same thing. So, so the formula, 1 half pi over 3. Um, pi over 3, the radius is 8. So I'm going to do 8 squared first, like getting stuck there, times the um, angle, which is pi over 3. And again, I'm going to punch that in really quick one more time. Let's say 0.5 times uh, 64 times pi over 3. And I'll get 33.5. And you have to look in your book to see exactly how they want your answers. This is square feet. If they leave it, all I would do, the top is 1 times 64 times pi. That's 64. Wow. That's 64 pi. On the bottom, I would have 6. I need to reduce that. Make it 32 pi over 3 square feet. Either way, you have to look and see. I'm probably going to use the decimal answer. I believe that's probably all we have today. It is. There's going to be the try. Hope that made a lot of sense to you today. Hope you didn't have any trouble. Go back and look if you need to. Um, I will see you tomorrow as we start our work in class. Hope you have a good rest of the evening or morning or whatever it is you're watching this. But have a good one. Bye.